Hey, I'm Ethan Sawyer. Folks call me the college essay guy because I spend a whole lot of time thinking about these things. So I wanted to share some of what I find are the most common mistakes that students make on the personal statement. And one of the first ones is students a lot of times think that these are going to be like English essays, but they ain't in a few different ways. So English essays are more about advancing an argument. They're going to be, you know, showing how a student thinks. There's not going to be the use of the word I in those. There's not going to be much vulnerability. Whereas a personal statement, the purpose is not necessarily to advance an argument. It's about what are the values, skills, qualities, interests that you're going to be bringing with you to a college campus. Yes, you're going to use the word I for sure. You're going to use contractions, right? There's going to be some vulnerability. You're going to learn more, of, more, more than just how a student thinks, but how they live and act and work and play and do all the things. So they're, they're, they're different pieces and they feel different too, I think. Uh, the other main big difference is that you oftentimes in English essays, you'll have a thesis come first. Whereas I think in a, in a, in a personal statement, sometimes that thesis will just be implied or sometimes that thesis will come at the very end, right? As, as part of an insight that kind of closes things out. So uh, that's the first mistake students I, I see make. Another mistake that I'll see students make is they'll choose a common topic, make common connections and use common language. As opposed to, I think a standout essay, if possible, chooses an uncommon topic, uh, makes uncommon connections, and uses uncommon language. Now, I paused after uncommon topic because that's not always possible. Sometimes a student has to write about what they have to write about. But I think that if you're going to choose a common topic like debate or you know dance or something like that, then I think it's all the more important to make uncommon connections. Now, what do I mean by uncommon connections? I'm talking about saying things that you wouldn't expect the um, what you wouldn't expect the author to say. So rather than talk in the let's say the the famed sports essay about discipline, hard work, and perseverance, no, give me some other values. What has basketball or whatever taught you about you know privacy or about healthy boundaries or what other values might surprise? And then the third thing and this is, comes later in the process, is how do we do that with uncommon language in a way that the reader wouldn't expect? So one test for that is, can you highlight any sentence in the personal statement and see, okay, does this is this a sentence that could appear in someone else's personal statement? Because if it is, maybe we trim it. You know, let's try to find a more specific way. Write the sentence that only you could write. Another mistake that I see students making is, is sticking with the first topic they picked. And so, you know, students will do a little bit of brainstorming and then they'll be like, oh, that seems like a good one. And they'll spend a lot of time, many drafts working on that. When if they had actually spent more time brainstorming and thinking about multiple ideas, then they wouldn't be so, I'm generalizing, I know, then students often, you know, kind of latch onto that first one. And because of that economic principle of sunk cost bias, because they've spent so much time on that one topic, they want to stick with it. I recommend students spend a good half an hour, maybe an hour doing lots of brainstorming with quality brainstorming exercises. That's a separate video. And, and thinking about lots of different possibilities, because if we have other options, then it's easier to be like, you know what, this isn't working. Let me try something else over here. Or how can I combine this idea with this other idea and blend them to make a phantasmagoric, awesome essay? Um, another mistake I see students make is when they're, first of all, believing that they have to write about a challenge. You don't have to write about a challenge to write a great personal statement. You know, challenges will help you go deep. Uh, montage essays, which focus on a theme can help you go wide and talk about many different sides of you, which are so cool to read. But if students do stick to like the challenge based essay, when students are writing this one, I see oftentimes they'll spend a lot of energy focusing on the challenge and not as much time focusing on the so what. And so my recommendation for that is squeeze the challenges into the first third of the essay. What were the challenges and effects? Like, how did it impact you? Because that's going to set your essay on whatever it was, the all the moving you had to do or parents divorce or whatever it is, how did those impact you? Because many other students have experienced the challenges that you experienced, at least on the surface, how did it impact you? And then what did you do about it? How did you meet your needs? Right. And it might take some time to think about, well, what were my needs? What, what, what was coming up for me? And then what did you do about it? And then finally, what did you learn? So three part structure for a challenges based essay, one challenges and effects. Two, what did I do about it? Three, what did I learn? That one, two, three. Now, first draft, it's probably going to be pretty challenges heavy, but if you can kind of squeeze those up, future drafts, hopefully, um, you know, get kind of that one third, one third, one third structure. Because colleges are only so interested in your challenges. You know, they're not something they don't, they're uncaring people. They just, you know, why, you know, that, that big thing that you went through is like, okay, but how did it metabolize you? What did you do with that? How did you spin that into something awesome? 
And ultimately what you're going for there is what are the values, skills, qualities, interests that you're going to be bringing with you to the college campus. Another mistake I see students make a lot, and I mentioned this just briefly, is I think students try to force this narrative challenges based structure, but there are so many options for topics. Here are seven options based on uh, 300 essays that I looked at. Uh, so it could be something that you write, you write about something that you really love or know a lot about, you know, animals or plants or history or, you know, so many, so many things I've seen students write about over the years. Uh, the second thing you could do is you could choose what I call essence objects. And you can Google essence objects to see what that is, but it's objects that connect to specific parts of you that, that reveal your values. And you could write about one. It's harder to do this. I think it's easier to write about several and talk about different sides of yourself. That's the second one. The third one is you can find a skill or superpower, something that you're really good at that you see weaving into other areas of your life, like your ability to uh, recognize people's needs. could be a cool theme, or maybe you've got a skill or superpower that's like beatboxing or juggling, and how is this manifested in different areas of your life? Then we've got the career essay, which is like, you know, here's the thing that I'm really you know, committed to. And I say on a scale of one to 10, if you're like level seven to 10 committed to it, maybe it's, you know, a candidate for a, a potential career personal statement. Uh, and then you've got, what are your different identities? So you could pick one identity, like I'm, I'm, you know, often the odd one out. And well, what does that mean? And what does that look like in your life? And in what areas? And what do you do about that? Or it could be an identity like, you know, identifying as queer or identifying as Bahraini or having you know, a mixed race identity. And you could, if you wanted to write about those different identities, each one per paragraph and do an essay that kind of is a, you know, a collage of these different identities. Now related to that idea six is to write about different homes. What are some places where you feel like you're in flow? You know, maybe it's like when you're in your, your workbench in your garage, or maybe it's when you're, you know, coaching, you know, young kids on debate, or maybe it's when you're writing, or maybe it's when you're painting, like what are those different homes for you? And each one of those could have a different paragraph and show a different side of you. And then finally, uncommon extracurricular activities. These are those things that you do that not everybody does, but they could reveal some interesting sides of you. And I'm not talking about debate and dance and, you know, uh, or like a mission trip that you took or volunteering at a hospital. Those are somewhat common. I'm talking about those, you know, more uncommon things that someone like goes like, you really do that? And it's like, yeah, I'm really into it. You know, what is that thing? I make scavenger hunts or, you know, one student that I knew once juggled while jogging. That was like his thing. So now it can be sometimes difficult because it's so niche to try and connect that to different sides of you. But one quick, simple way, like a heuristic for figuring out if it's a good topic is number one, does it connect to many different sides of you? And number two, if possible, is it somewhat uncommon? Another mistake I see students making, and I'll keep this one kind of short, is that students often believe they have to pack everything into their personal statements. But your personal statement is just one part of the application. You've also got the activities list where you can do all your bragging. Take your bragging from your personal statement and put it in your activities list. And then once you've written a great activities list, oh, that's doing the work for you and you can just chill. Not really just chill in your personal statement, but you can show other sides of yourself. And then you've got the additional information section, which is a part of your application where you can reveal all kinds of different things, why you got such and such bad grade or you know, whatever you, whatever you need. For more information on that, just Google Common App Additional Info section and you'll see a guide that I wrote on that. And then uh, you've got your supplemental essays, which is your essays that you can write that you know, some schools require that allow you to show different sides of yourself. So you don't have to pack absolutely everything in there. Another mistake I see students making is um, not doing enough research for their why this school essay. So if you have to write a why this school essay, that's like, you know, why do you want to attend our institution? Make sure you do research and please don't talk about the weather or the low student to faculty ratio or, you know, its location in a city. You know, it's in New York. Yes, we know it's in New York. But what else? How do you find a bunch of reasons that are specific to the school and specific to you and connect those? Because it's why us doesn't just mean why is the school awesome? They know they're awesome. You know, the person reading your your essay has probably spent a lot of time trying to convince other people that the school is awesome. Right. So instead, how do those things connect? So you have X opportunity that connects to this Y particular part of me. And that's kind of your little formula for a good why us moment, but it's gonna take a lot of research. The last mistake that I see students making a lot is waiting too late to ask for feedback. Give them a little time to make sure that they can give you quality feedback. They will thank you, you will thank me. You can send me an email. Um, anyway, those are the mistakes I see. That's the advice I got. <laughs>